Italian Wine Travel with Stevie Kim. Buongiorno, my name is Stevie Kim and welcome to Italian Wine Podcast on the road edition and that means we are on our youtube channel mama jumbo shrimp today we're here with sara vezza in monforte d'alba and the name of the winery we're visiting today is called yosetta safirio yosetta or yosetta 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 so sarah listen tell us a little bit about yourself and why is the name of the winery Yosetta Safirio, when your name is Aravezza. We have a very long story. Uh, we have about two centuries of story and uh, I'm the fifth generation. But uh, until uh, the middle of the 80s, the, my um, grandfather and ancestor, they were used just to be uh, vine growers, you know. So uh, what happened is that uh, in around uh, the 80s, my mother and my father, they started to produce wine although they decided to give the name of the estate to my mother name. So this is why the winery is called Yosetta Safirio, which is my mother name. Um, tell us where exactly where your winery is located. It's located in Monforte d'Alba, uh, which is one of the 11 municipalities producing Barolo. So actually we are in Piemonte, so in the north part of Italy. And in Piemonte, we are in the south part of this region. So we are about, uh, let's say, one hour from the sea and one hour from the France border. So give us kind of an overview of Josetta Safirio. You know, we have this uh, historical brand, Josetta Safirio. And in the historical brand, we have all our classic labels, I would say Nebbiolo, Barbera, and of course Barolo, and all the Barolo single vineyards. But for from few years, I also started to be very curious about the future of uh, viticulture. And for this reason, I bought a plot in a high part of Elanga, about 700 meters on the sea level. And there I'm starting to produce uh, Alta Langa appellation. I dedicated a brand to that because uh, eight hectares is a lot, so it's like a second estate, I, I would say. So it's still the same uh, winery, still the same property, but we have two different line and two different brands. So the historical, traditional brand, Yosetta Safirio, focus on Barolo production, and the future, which is dedicated to the sparkling Metodo Classico with Saravezza brand. Right now, how many uh, bottles are you producing in total? Today, yes. including all the production, is around 120,000 bottles. Okay. And when you started, how many? Your first vintage, 2002, you said? My first vintage, I made about 1,000 bottles of wine. So I'm, I made a very big job. Yeah, so you've... It's, it's, it's evolved in a very significant way. Exactly, but uh, the thing I'm most proud of is that I changed uh, this estate to be just not only small, but also to be very conventional, to a totally sustainable estate. So we have today 20 hectares of vineyards and 16 hectares dedicated to forest we take care of. So we have a forest with bees, uh, a forest we dedicated a lot of time to be, you know, a natural uh, reserva so that uh, animals can stay healthy there. And we have a truffle trees uh, forest. So we are really investing a lot of time and efforts to balance the actors we have dedicated to the vineyards to balance with the forest, with the woods. So, you know, uh, sustainability is kind of a big word today, right? So for you, Saravezza, what, how, how do you define sustainability, especially um, in terms of your winery? Well, we have different shapes uh, of sustainability, for sure the environment impact. So we decided to be organic from 2004 for my health problems. So I decided to go uh, in that direction because I could not go anymore in the vineyards because of chemical products. To be organic, to be uh, to have a, invest in biodiversity. But on the other side, you have also to uh, think about all the rest 
means the economic impact, uh, the relation you have with your employees, uh, with, all the, with the neighbors, and uh, so also the social impact. So what are some of the challenges that you face um, being a winemaker today in this area? The most challenging thing is, uh, you know, to be supported by the other colleagues and to work in team with other colleagues, you know. Sometimes I feel that uh, I am a little bit, I would say, alone because it's difficult that people understand why you decide to be organic. They think that it's just a fashion, you know, or why you decide to have a, a sort of orchard for the baby roots to, re to replace. Uh, it's very difficult that people understand your decision. For me, today is the most difficult part of my job. I want to talk a little bit about, we see the two labels here, right? And you are, you're, at a, you're pivoting, you're at a critical moment in your wine business. Because in the past, we always saw this gnomi. Yeah, the, the, the gnome, yeah. yeah. Which is kind of, you know, a representative of um, your label, right. right? Your persona. They have been uh, our mascot for about 40 years. Yeah. So that's uh, been, it's been a long time. It has been a long time, but what happened is that a few years ago, I started to produce, produce wine also under my brand. And one year ago, uh, we entered in a holding uh, run by Renzo Rosso. So uh, it was something that was in my heart, you know, to change the labels because uh, even if uh, it is something that is so fancy, fairy tale, very easy to, you know, recognize. On the other side, I wanted something more elegant and classic. And uh, so be part of this new project also uh, pushed me to go more in that direction. So we decided to change the, the, the labels in the end. So it's, a, it's very, very different. It's very different, right? definitely it is. This is so a very- So tell us a little bit about the, the evolution from the gnome to mm. what it seems, yeah. what the, is it? This is, is a wild orchid. Wild orchid. Yeah, the wild okay. orchid. And uh, I think that is a very good... Um, Why wild orchid? Yeah, to translation of the philosophy we have. I mean, this bond, because the wild orchid is, uh, you know, very, very endemic of, the, of a specific area. So it grows only there and it's so sensitive to the climate change, to the characteristic of the soil, to the biodiversity. So uh, I, I think that uh, it's not the gnome that disappeared, but the gnome change is its into, a wild, into a wild orchid. Yeah. But the winemaking hasn't changed, right? What's inside no, hasn't no, changed. The, no, the winemaking didn't change, but every year we try to do better and better, you know? So um, what I've learned in the years is that we really need to know all the characteristics of that single plot, uh, of the soil, of the microclimate, of the terroir in general, and uh, just to enhance all these characteristics during the winemaking process. So, you know, we spoke about um, one thing when we were downstairs and you were talking about the Lusso Vero, which translates into, um, I suppose, real luxury. Would you, would you like to share with their audience what you mean by that? Yeah, I think that today the, the real uh, luxury is to have the time to enjoy life in an authentic way. So that means for me, when people come at the winery and I can welcome them, you know, take them in the vineyards and, and help them to understand all the work, all the incredible and intense work all over the year that I've done. And I can understand that drink in my wine. They really feel all this energy in my wine. So in my wine, so a very authentic experience. We really welcome about 2,000 people a year, so we have a lot of incoming at the winery. Because and what do, what do they do? What do you what do you? How do you define hospitality? They uh, they enjoy the testing. They enjoy the cellar tour. They come uh, uh, in the vineyards. We have this ambitious project called uh, Adopt a Row, Adopt a Filare. What does it mean to adopt a, a row of they, uh, vines? They right? adopt a row for one year and they 
have, uh, of course, the wine coming from uh, that rose and I enjoy uh, the experience coming for the harvest, for instance, or coming for the pruning. They really are part of the team when they come for the events and uh, we have so much fun. And I've seen that in the years, uh, many of them go on. Uh, and so we have relations that uh, last for years together with these abductors. And it's, I'm very proud of that. Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you very much. And hope to see you back soon. Okay, it's a wrap. Chin Chin with Italian Wine People.